Okay, so hi everyone. Um, welcome to lecture three. So today we are going to be really starting in on what I consider to be, you know, real analysis proper in the sense that we're going to make a definition, which is the definition of convergence for sequences, which I think in, sort of expresses one of the fundamental sort of patterns of thought or patterns of logic in analysis. Some of you might have heard of, um, you know, epsilons and deltas. Okay, so we're going to kind of start seeing that. This won't have delta, but it will have epsilon in it. So, you know, uh, but yeah, so it's a very uh, characteristically analysis flavored topic. Um, and it's very important. So, but to do that first, uh, we should just talk a little bit about sequences and like what they are. Uh, so it's not, it's pretty simple, but um, I just want to show you guys some examples. Uh, so let's begin here. So a sequence, okay. A sequence, uh, you know, let's write it like this for now. So it's basically just a function uh, from the natural numbers to the real numbers, at least when we write it like this, you know, without any extra, you know, stuff around it, uh, this basically indicates that, you know, n, the index, this is called the index, right? Sn, uh, so like, okay, here, let me sort of write this out. Um, what this is supposed to represent, so this represents a, like an infinite list, S1, S2, and so on, goes on forever, okay? So that's the sequence. It's literally what it sounds like. It's just basically a list of numbers, right? Uh, start and, and so the index is what we use to kind of keep track of the position in the list, right? So S1 is the first number, S2 is the second number, S1 and S2 and so on are the terms of the sequence. One, two, and so on are the indices. And um, so conventionally, right, typically if we write stuff like this, N starts from one and that's why I say the natural numbers here. Uh, if you wanted to start, so we can use a different starting index. Uh, so we can write something like Sn from n equals m to infinity. So m is just some integer, some m in the integers. This is now a function. Oof. On the set of integers. Uh, starting at m, right? So m is like the starting index here. Uh, and uh, right, so you could also write this as like S M, S M plus one, and so on, right? So it's just a list. Now I wanna emphasize that uh, just like, so if you watched my uh, note on functions, right? In that um, video, I tried to really make clear that functions don't, the functions are not rules per se, right? I mean, they don't have to follow any rules of how the values are determined. They can basically be random. And the same thing is true for sequences, right? I mean, the sequences are functions, so it makes sense that that should apply here too. But I just want to really bring to your attention that sequences, like when we describe sequences, it would, like most of the time, we will write down a formula to determine the sequence, right? But when we talk about sequences in general, just like when we talk about functions in general, we have to imagine that the sequence could be doing 
anything, literally anything. The numbers could be doing anything, right? And similarly, like, even if, if we have a rule that defines a sequence, that doesn't mean that there are, you know, values like in between the different values of the sequences. Um, you know, like if we have a formula like Sn equals n squared, that's not like saying that the sequence is like the function f of x equals x squared, which is defined on like all real numbers. They're two totally different objects, right? So the domain is just this discrete set of integers and that's it. There's nothing else, no extra information. It's just a list of numbers basically. And a lot of the time we'll just have a formula to describe that list, okay? Uh, so let's, um, I'm just gonna give you some examples and then uh, we'll call it for this section. So, and I'll kind of give you a little bit of a intuition on how to think about them too, I guess. So, so examples of sequences. Okay, so here are just several really simple ones. So something like Sn equals one over N squared. This again, without any extra sort of, you know, context or anything, by default, this basically just means we have a sequence starting at one, like n equals one, right? And uh, it's just defined on the natural numbers. So this sequence would basically be, you know, one, when n equals one, you get one. Uh, then when n equals two, you get one quarter. When n equals three, you get one ninth. Uh, when n equals four, you get one sixteenth and so on, right? So that's one sequence. Here's another one, something like cosine of n pi over three. This one, it starts at one half, then you get negative one half, negative one, negative one half, one half, one, and so on. And it oscillates just like the cosine function. Uh, Another one would be Sn equals one plus one over N to the N. I'm not gonna write out the numbers here, but they just like sort of increase and this slowly approaches E actually, but uh, we'll talk more about that later. Um, some extremely simple ones, but I just wanna include them for the variety of behavior. So Sn equals N is sort of obviously a very extremely simple Example, something like Sn equals negative one to the N times N is another example. And the reason I include these is because, so now I wanna kind of like visualize them a little bit, okay? So I'm actually gonna erase uh, this stuff that I wrote out. So one way to sort of visualize these is like a plot, much like, like graph them kind of how you'd graph a function, right? Uh, so something like, Actually, let me use the uh, straight line tool here. Uh, there we go. So this one would be, you know, you'd have a dot at one and then you'd have a dot at like a quarter and then it, it kind of goes down pretty fast, right? got kind of spaced out in a funny way but yeah so that one it just kind of decays right that's the trend but remember the sequence itself is just the dots here nothing about nothing in between the dots just this just just the dots i'm the, the dotted line here is just the the trend right uh, but not all sequences will have a trend okay uh let's see here's this one maybe i'll draw this one over here Um, so it starts at one half, then it goes to negative one half, and then negative one, negative one half, one half, one, one half, negative one half, negative one, so on, right? Following the wave all 
right. Um, this one looks something like uh, it just kind of. increases and slowly. Sorry, the dots should not be getting like spaced out more and more like this. I just can't help it. So they slowly approach. This is supposed to be like one, two, three, four, five, six, so on. Uh, and they slowly approach E. Uh, here, obviously, they just kind of go up forever. And then here, they sort of oscillate, but they get wider and wider in the oscillation, right? So um, the reason I wanted to include all of these is because they all kind of have fundamentally different behavior. They have different shapes, right? Well, these two, one over n squared and this one plus one over n to the n, they both basically just end up approaching some constant value from one side actually, right? These decrease down to zero and these increase up to E. Um, but this se sequence just oscillates with like a fixed amplitude, right? So that's one possibility. This one increases towards infinity, right? This one oscillates, but with increasing amplitude, right? So there's like a lot of different uh, types of behavior that can happen. And most of them can kind of be described with some combination of like oscillation, uh, increase, like, yeah, oscillation and like tendency towards infinity or tendency towards like a finite number basically. It's kind of abstractly, those are common ways to, like common phrases or terms to describe the behavior of a sequence. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, we'll see more, many more sequences, obviously. And in the next video, I'll talk about convergence. Um, so that's all.